Alright, Quincy 191 here, be casting the last game of this uh, three game series between MSI and Online Kingdom in the NASL Season 2 show matches. Uh, the other two videos are up on my channel if you want to watch either of them. I won't spoil them if you just want to know who won, I guess you can skip to the end or something like that. But uh, for the second game in a row, we actually have time to discuss the bands and stuff as they happen instead of having to rush through the whole thing because apparently this replay was uh, actually recorded in time to do that. And again, these were played about nine months ago, uh, so some of the stuff I say might be a little off because I don't know exactly what uh, balance changes were up to this point, but of course, you know, the game stays the same. So we got four bands coming out so far, uh, starting out with Ophelia, Tempest, Plague Rider, Hellbringer, and now Tundra. Uh, Ophelia is now banned for the second game in a row, actually, after she was picked up in game one. And I don't know if that's just uh, MSI not wanting to play against Ophelia, because it didn't seem like uh, she she was that dominant in game one, played by Online Kingdom. Um, but, you know, always a good hero, in particular in the hands of Ake, I think is the probably the best Ophelia player, just uh, consist the guy I, I see having the most consistently good games with that hero. But uh, and we also see the Rhapsody ban. Uh, also banned the last game and the game one, I believe, so I think she was banned all three games. Um, a strong support hero, of course, at this point in the game, uh, she was quite overpowered. She's been nerfed since then, but... Uh, her Disco Inferno, I think, at this point is a little too strong, especially for pushing towers. It uh, gives her a little bit too much potential in that regard. Um, so we are now waiting on the last two bands. But other than that, nothing crazy. Hellbringer, of course, with that massive ultimate, having a whole lot of uh, initiation and counter-initiation ability. He doesn't... Uh, do too much outside of that, but of course death boil, shackles, those kind of thing. Um, useful abilities, and uh, really as a, a support hero is what he's usually played as, sometimes as a semi-carry. Um, but in particular, you know, we saw uh, B-Diz playing as a, a hard support hero um, uh, when Easy played Complexity in uh, that series. Um, and really for a support hero, having that massive teamfight ultimate is quite useful. You know, you don't have to do much in terms of damage, but putting that death boil out, doing some magic damage, and having that giant uh, AoE stun and Malphus come out with some damage out is really useful for a support hero. Certainly better than, say, Glacius, who has a channeling ultimate that does a whole bunch of damage, but really isn't particularly useful. And uh, really one of the reasons that hero is not as good, not as popular as, uh, say, Andromeda or or Rhapsody for that matter. Uh, last two bands coming out are Kraken and Electrician. Of course Kraken was played the first two games, not going to be played here. Uh, probably largely due to his role... Actually it wasn't because he was uh, played by MSI last game and he was banned by MSI. Uh, okay, did ban Electrician though, who was picked up last game by MSI and did very well with him. Um, so he's not going to be in the pool, and uh, once again, the Torture is uh, out, uh, does escape the ban pool, and that's here you do often see ban. You can see Fly uh, soft picking it already, looking to try to make it as one of their first two pickups. As uh, Online Kingdom starts out with Pharaoh, who uh, is going to be able to be picked up for the second game in the series. He was banned last game, but uh, had a huge, huge role in game one. Um, and that is a hero that you do see often uh, banned or first picked. Um, obviously a very strong initiation with that ultimate Tormented Soul. It's plenty of uh, ability and you know between vision and damage, being able to be anywhere at once, but in particular the uh, Hellfire Wall of Mummies and Ultimate Combination. Uh, you can basically pour it into a tower somewhere and then easily get a jump on somebody, throw up the wall and uh, really make your own gank, you know, uh, fashion that. As, as easily as possible with you know, not even having to have any stuns. You just uh, jump in there, throw up that wall of mummies, and it's uh, usually a pretty easy kill. But MSI went counter here with Nymphora and Polywalk Priest, and uh, Polywalk Priest, of course, a very, very strong hero for No-Tail. 
almost always plays middle, uh, gets that post haste, starts porting around everywhere, and he's just absolutely fantastic when it comes to ward traps. Um, probably the best player I've seen. Of course, you know, No Tail, he's, he's the best <laughs> at quite a few heroes. Uh, Polywog being one of them, uh, Silop being another actually who did not get banned, but with No Tail probably playing that Polywog Priest, I doubt we'll see Silop picked up. Not to mention, as we've said before, you know, this is these are show matches and they no. don't seem to be taking them super seriously, which is it's kind of fun. Get some heroes that we don't normally see, like Ra, who is incredibly powerful um, uh, at this stage in the game because he, he did get a recent nerf where his uh, Ashes to Ashes no longer procs off creep damage, but at this point in the game it will. And he just he's way way too powerful. You get him a whole bunch of uh, health and regen, and he can just start destroying people in team fights. Never dies, partly because of the regen, um, the natural regen from Ashes to Ashes, and the cliff walking from his uh, stun, as well as the ultimate, uh, giving him a rebirth. Basically, it's called pyroclas pyroclasmic rebirth. So, as we'll call it that. But um, Online Kingdom picking up Glacius and Torture. Torture, of course, a very popular hero. I really hope that, uh, as I said last game, that he's going to be played in a semi-carry or carry role because you do see him ever so often um, picked up as a support hero, and I don't really think that's a role that he fits well. Uh, he's got strong, strong damage abilities and not too much CC. He's not particularly tanky, and you know, there's no reason for it. There's not a lot of team fight um, or team support ability there. It's mostly damage output, which is fine for a, se a carry or semi-carry, but for a support hero that's going to sit in the back and not going to try to get in the middle of things because he doesn't want to die because he's not getting kills, so dying is just going to actually destroy your GPM. Um, so for that type of hero, sitting in the back does not work a whole really well. For Desham or Voodoo Jester or Rhapsody or Andromeda, that, that kind of thing would work well, you know, waiting for the right opportunity to use your abilities, but Torture is not that sort of hero, so... I imagine he will be picked up and used in a uh, carry or semi-carry role, as he has been, Magnus. and the pickup of Magnus almost ensures Lazy. that, because between Magnus and Glacius you do have two more typical support heroes. Um, but, you know, Magnus isn't always played in a support role, and I, I imagine he would be, but it's possible. Uh, meanwhile, MSI follows up their raw pick with Parasite, who is one of my more favorite heroes. Uh, last time we saw him uh, picked up by MSI, and he did go the Codex build, which is my preferred build. Uh, Puzzle Box, of course, uh, very popular on him as well, but he's, of course, a, a strong jungler and a strong anti-jungler, uh, able to infest creeps and basically deny them from the imposing jungler. Uh, in particular, if you have an Ophelia on the other team, then Parasite can infest her creeps and uh, steal them, <laughs> which just destroys her ability to jungle, so very good uh, Ophelia counter, obviously, with Ophelia banned this game. She's uh, not going to be in the game, but uh, generally very strong jungler, and uh, got quite a lot of utility too, with uh, strong nukes and a silence and a move speed slow that actually gives him uh, the move speed, and of course the stealing buffs with the ultimate. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is steal uh, like stuff like haste runes and stuff. People pick up a haste, I hit him with my ultimate, they think they're like, they're going to get away, but oh no, now I'm super fast, haha. And anyway, MSI rounds out their lineup with Jerezaya, who they also played last game and did quite well with. Um, <clears throat> I believe Nozio played it last time, and obviously this time he will be playing Polywalk Priest, because that's his hero, so to speak. And uh, Hani on Torture means that Torture is probably not going to play in a support role, especially because uh, Ake has picked up Magmus, and Ake is the usual support player. So, uh, strong lineups on both sides, I think. Neither one of them really went for um, uh, late-game type builds. Uh, they have some late-game potential with uh, Jerezaya. Uh, Amun-Ra can just get so beefy that he does out-carry things, but that's mostly on the back of his uh, strong early and mid-game. Uh, so he, he's not really that type of hero where once he's fully geared up and other heroes are fully geared up, he's going to win a lot of fights. But he does get geared very quickly because he is probably the strongest farmer in the game with his, uh, you know, his abilities don't cost him mana cast, just health. So once you get some health, you can just absolutely wreck the jungle, just run through there with both, both of your abilities, easily, easily clearing camps. And
And there we go. I forgot to do it last time, and I'll just do it this time because I don't want them to be doing more of that. Uh, anyway, so uh, the same goes though on the uh, Hellborn side. They do have the Mage Bane for late game, and that's really a, a strong counter to Omnidra, of course. Taking away his mana, if he's not about 50% mana, then he's going to not be able to use his ultimate. So uh, I shouldn't say that not just the side side has uh, a hard carry because obviously Mage Bane is a hard carry and if this game goes late between him and Torture uh, they will be able to take it I think there is some strong CC on the Legion side and Polywog Priest which is really you know the bane of Mage Bane's existence <laughs> I see what I did there um, because he can get locked down uh, unlike other unlike few, few heroes can lock people down like Polywog with the uh, Hex and the Tongue Tide and really prevent him from being able to blink out which of course is what he relies on to live so uh... polywog is a pretty strong counter to uh... mage bane not quite as strong as a hero like fade for example that can burn all his mana that's really fun to do as we see polywog and glacius going at it in the middle lane right here and actually glacius is winning this fight uh, loda on mage bane stop canceling his blink and this Polywog is already forced to use a health pod, which is then cancelled by Glacius' Tender Blast. So, uh, this is back to that 2 2 1 strategy, of course, at this point. Tri lanes are down. Catman Champion coming in from Parasite, but that's going to be able to do anything without any lockdown. Uh, of course, Mage Bane has that blank at level 1, and he's just uh, too mobile to, to do much against. So uh, we have this uh, Glacius and Mage Bane in the middle against M4 and Polywog Priest. I do expect Mage Bane and Glacius to, uh, so to speak, win this lane. They may not get as much farm as they'd like as Glacius jumps and Mage Bane jump onto Polywog Priest with a Thunder Blast, and he's going down really quickly. And now they're going to turn their attention to M4 and. Neither one of them are going to go down, but both of them are get quite low, and that's, uh, you know, just as good. Forcing them to use that health pot, or, you know, even worse, sometimes going back to base. Usually they'll use the courier to bring somebody, uh, some health potions in, but... You know, you do see that occasionally, forcing somebody to go back, losing experiences in gold, and that can give you a real advantage. But, uh, Glacius and Magba Mage Bane taking an early lead here with... Uh, against the Polywog and Nymphora, and I do expect them to win this lane. Even if they get killed a couple of times, I don't think they're really, really going to be able to completely shut down this Mage Bane, and of course, that's going to allow him to at least get experience and probably quite a bit of farm, as they're, they're being very aggressive. Um, and that that's not going to bode well for uh, Legion team later on, as it looks like Hellboy, or the Parasite and before Polywog are looking to jump this Glacius, and they might just get him, although he's got a health pot now, and he's running. And his Parasite has a leech back up, and he's going to run in and try to kill Glacius, and he's... Haha, <laughs> nice, nice juke there. From, uh, magic's on Glacius to get away from uh, uh, Parasite. So it looks like there's going to be support here from Fly on Parasite in this middle lane, trying to set up ganks, particularly on Glacius, of course, because Mage Bane is going to be so hard to lock down. But a uh, nice getaway there from him. And really no tell, uh, and Nova used a lot of stuff, of course, Nova having to go all the way back, although Magix did too, uh, to try to kill either Glacius or Mage Bane or both, and they did not get any kills. So. It's a bit of a shame, as Mage Bane jumps onto Polywog Priest and steals some of his mana, burns some of his mana. But doesn't do too much else. Taking a look at the uh, creep scores here, uh, Jeroziah is far and away the game's leader at 23 and 12. Uh, he is an initial against this Pharaoh, and that's going to be a problem, because Pharaoh needs early levels and early farm in order to become the roaming, ganking initiator that he can be, and Sherezai is clearly winning this lane. Bet and that's Trixie. Yep. Um, so, you know, Pharaoh's not, it's not like this is game-breaking for him, he's still uh, a ver obviously a very powerful hero, and levels do matter a little bit more than farm, but 
Of course, Jared's I also has 14 denies, so the levels aren't looking too good either. Um, up in the top lane, we have the Torturer and Magmus up against the Amun Ra, who is solo and is currently back at base healing. Oh no, he's starting to ping. And this might be a problem for Pharaoh. As there goes the kill bomb, and here comes Ra, and he's not going to initiate because the tower is a little too close as Pharaoh pops a health pot. So it looks like Ra's coming down here. I don't know if they're gonna switch lanes and cherries in the top. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. As he gets to start out with stun, and the impalement comes out, and that's gonna actually kill him. <laughs> a nice kill between uh, Hane, sorry, Hani and Ake. There, uh, of course, Torture's Impalement is such a powerful skill, and because it's physical, uh, Durzai's Repel is not going to prevent him from being able to use it. And without any strong getaways on Jerry's part, it's really going to be an issue, and that's probably the what Fresh Pro was dealing the with Hellborn up destroyed here that caused them to switch lanes as Hani now also claims the top tower. So he is going that uh, Impalement Chain Reactions build, and I like that build. It's it's really, really good, particularly when the uh, opponent does not have an escape mechanism. Impalement can put out so much damage. As there's another stun, and there's Chain Reactions, and Impalement once again, and Jerezaya pops his ultimate just to live here, and Magnus mm, probably won't be. Nope, is not going to be. Surviving as there goes the heal bomb, and Ake okay, falls. But, you know, a little bit of overaggression there, probably from Online Kingdom, but they can afford to do that kind of thing. They have uh, Torture and Magmus is a very good combination. Uh, Magmus setting up that Torture or Stun chain reactions. It's slightly complicated to land sometimes. But uh, there's also a good lane swap from MSI. You know, Ra was having problems in top against uh, Torture and Magmus, of course, and Jerezai was absolutely destroying bottom, so... They have leveraged, in a sense, some of that advantage in order to prevent Ra from being completely destroyed. And that's something that needs to happen, as he jumps in here with a stun, and Pharaoh's gonna put up the wall of mummies, and now Ra's got a little more that he bargained for, because here comes the magma stun, and he's dead. So, looks like Ra was probably just trying to throw out some harassment, because he was fairly low, and Pharaoh was at full health, but that's uh, some bad timing right there, that's gonna cost him his life. And Parasite looks like going to come in here with a Minotaur, and he's got the stun, of course, but that's not going to be enough to kill Magmus as there goes the Lava Surge, and he still has the Steam Bath, although, of course, the Minotaur stun and the uh, Raw stun could cancel that. But the uh, Minotaur, really, the stun's rate is not large enough for him to be able to sneak up there and uh, get better position on a hero like uh, Magmus that has an escape mechanism. Uh, he needs, if he's going to try to do that, he needed something like the raw stun to set it up so that he could follow it and not be evaded by the law of surge. And it looks like we've initiation on Polylog Priest over here, and he's going to try to run away, but there goes the Wall of Mummy's Trap, and the ultimate coming out from Mage Bay, and that's going to kill Polylog. Loader grabbing the kill there, and Online Kingdom takes a 3-1 advantage. So, uh, looking at the GPMs real quick, we got Torture at 347, Pharaoh at 278, pretty good, nice pickup from his, uh, uh, Early game, absolutely getting dominated as Pharaoh comes in on top of Nymphora, and there's the mummy walls, and that's going to be the death of Nymphora as well. And Loda picks up a second kill. Apollo ports in, but just not in time. And Parasite's got a wild hunter here. He will go invisible, but there's nothing to kill. Looks like Ra's chased down Magnus and grabs the smack down there. Oh, and he nearly dies to the Pharaoh Tormented Soul. Oh, that's close. Of course, he does have his ultimate up, but it is a five minute cooldown at level one. You don't want to use that cooldown if you don't have to. Uh, anyway, back to the GPM for a second. Pharaoh at 268 now. Dropped a little bit. Um, 
because he had to go back to base. But Glacius at 141, fairly strong for a support hero. Uh, Mage Man at 276, pretty good. Probably not quite where he'd want to be, but he is 2-0-0, and it looks like they're going to try to jump this polywalk here, and despite the Hex, Magmus is going to get in range to stun, and there goes... Oh, but Jerzyah and M4 with strong coordinates here. Jerzyah Hill is going to prevent Polywog's death, and the Repel is going to prevent any more stuns as Magnus barely gets away using all of his bottle charges. Two of his bottle charges, actually. So there's some nice TP support there on MSI's part. Uh, Polywog Priest nearly going down, but Jerzyah and as Magmus uses his Lava Surge to stun Polly and steal a DD rune. And uh, MSI needs to do that because they're, you know, on the defensive right now. They're getting... Sorry, as Mag... Uh, Ra is forced to use his ultimate and then immediately dies. Parasite, meanwhile, is being chased down a nice ultimate from Pharaoh, and that's going to set up the chain reactions and the uh, ultimate from Mage Bane, actually. It's Pharaoh that ends up getting that kill, probably with the Hellfire. And Torturer's Impalement is back in four seconds, that's probably going to get just in time for this armor to wear off, and there it goes. Lots of tower damage, of course. That Impalement very useful for pushing, and you just see how that tower falls from full health. And it's going to go all the way down. Bitch slapped. As actually Glacius gets picked up by a war trap. Destroyed a legion tower. And good tower push there from Online Kingdom. In the meantime, though, uh, Jerizai has really just been free farming this top lane, and he is now up to 350 gold per minute, far and away top on his team. A second place is Polywog at 211, and after that, it's. Uh, Parasite at 145, so serious gold disadvantages early on here for the Hellborn team, and like we said in the early game, they don't really have a hard carry, they don't have anybody that's going to be able to compete with that Mage Bane, so they need to be a little more aggressive than this, they need to be pushing towers, they need to be team fighting, because they've got the Jerizai ultimate, they've got the Poly ultimate, they've got uh, Ra, who is an incredibly strong early to mid game hero, but tapers off quite significantly once you hit late game, in particular against a Mage Bane who will prevent his ultimate from doing anything. And you know they're not they're not farming well enough or pushing well enough to justify this. As it looks like Polly's gonna get jumped here by the Magma Stun and the Pharaoh Ultimate and the Tormented Soul and Hellfire are going to take him out. Jerzyah ports in to try to help Polly, but that was kind of useless as he got melted far too quick. So looks like we got a four on three brewing here in the middle with uh, Ra at bottom and Mage Bane at top for the farming, and that's more bad news really for the. Uh, Legion team has now Parasite, or sorry, Pharaoh's got an invisibility rune. He's going to be able to use his mummies to trap somebody. So there and there goes the trap onto uh, Nymphora. In the meantime, Parasite responds to the Magma Stun by killing him. Torture is not going to get the ward trap, uh, but Mage Bane is going to get hit with the tongue tie. And a chain reaction stun coming out from Torture, hitting both Parasite and Polywog is going to prevent a lot of damage. The tongue tied, and only a few of the war wars were in range for that. So, despite that, and then for a heal and other stuff, it's uh, not going to be quite enough damage coming out to kill Mage Bane, who does have a helmet of the Black Legion and Steam Boots already. And it looks like they found this torture down here. They got Striders on a couple of heroes, hopefully, trying to get that hex off. He does get the hex off, but Torture uh, throws the Impale down, and he's not going to die. In the meantime, Polywog gets priest in the Wall of Mummies, trapped in the Wall of Mummies, of course, that Impalement is. Physical and use the chain reaction stun to slow him down. Ultimate from Pharaoh manages to stun Pharaoh, uh, Jerzyah just long enough for Magnus to set up a stun and four, getting kicked out by Loda. And Parasite's gonna try to invest a creep to no avail as he's now got the entire Hellborn team just destroying him. So, an incredibly strong team fight there for Online Kingdom. They did have the 5 on 4 advantage for the uh, whole duration of it as Ra was just forming the bottom lane. And Really, fresh pro and raw needed to be there. That fight took far, far too long for him to be able to say that he didn't have enough time to get over there. And the uh, Legion side obviously could have used him as they lost four and took none. In the meantime now, Torture pops the Impalement, and there's gonna be a stun from Magnus? Maybe. Nope. So, 
Uh, Hell Legion are going to defend the tower with several TPs. Um, I would have liked to see a stun on Polylog Priest there. I think they probably could have taken him out. Torture was a little bit low on mana, but he had enough to land a stun, and uh, stacking a few stuns would have just actually destroyed the player. Polylog Priest. And now it looks like MSI is going to try to counter push as Magnus has got his ultimate there and he's going to jump in on top of Parasite. That's not quite going to kill him thanks to the Jerezaiah. And Roth throws out a stun and uh, a bunch of stuns go back on top of Page Bane. But Amphora and Ra are both going to be doing it take out. And a nice Feral ultimate there, putting up a lot of money in front of the entire uh, team fight. And Parasite's ultimate is being disjointed by Magnus and Steam Bath. In the meantime, uh, Parasite picks off. Uh, sorry, Pharaoh picks up Parasite, and now Jerezai is running for his life with his charm on so he can't be stunned, and he's going to get away, but now Online Kingdom are going to get this middle tower, there goes the impalement for torture, and that's a third tier 1 tower kill for Online Kingdom compared to none for MSI, they are now have a 12k gold lead along with an 8k experience lead and a 15 to 4 hero kill advantage, and they are absolutely in charge of this game which is very, very bad for MSI because they don't have the hard carry. They don't have anybody that's going to compete with the Mage Bane, and in fact right now they don't have anybody that's going to compete with uh, Pharaoh, or Torture, or probably Magnus. I mean, they're just absolutely getting face-rolled right now. And, you know, you can see that in the gold per minutes. The leader on the Legion side is Jerezai at 294, and uh, Hellborn have three heroes above that. In fact, three heroes above 350, as it looks like Magnus and is looking to jump onto Derezaya, and that's not going to happen as he puts the charm up. But... So he cannot be stunned, and he's just, nope, not going to walk away. Now Torture is joining the party, and uh, Mage Bane's going to blink and do some nice hero blocking there. Nice chain reaction stun from Torture, follow-up stun from Magmus, and that's going to be the end of Jeraziah as the GG's come out, and that looks like the game. So... A very, very quick win there from Online Kingdom. Absolutely dominated. 16 to 4 hero kills and a 16 and a half minute concede. And the Online Kingdom team takes game three of these NASL show matches. So that's it. I will see you folks later.